Coming down, 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 coming down. Spirit of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray, let the Lord have his way. Spirit of the Lord is coming down, it's coming down, 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 coming down. Spirit of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray, let the Lord have his way. Spirit of the Lord is coming down, it's coming down, 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 it's coming down. The Spirit of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray, let the Lord have his way. The Spirit of the Lord is coming down, coming down, 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 it's coming down. Spirit of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray, let the Lord have his way. The Spirit of the Lord is coming down. And I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I cleaned up my house and I kicked the devil out. I feel the Lord stretching out in, well, I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I cleaned up my house and I kicked the devil out. And I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I cleaned up my house, kicked the devil out, and I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I cleaned up my house, and I kicked the devil out. And I feel the Lord, come on, I feel something. Well, I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Well, I cleaned up my house, kicked the devil out. I feel the Lord stretching out. Do you feel the Lord stretching out in you? Do you feel the Lord stretching out in you? Here's the question. Have you cleaned up your house? Have you kicked the devil out? Stretching. Praise God. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. I feel God stretching out in me. We thank and praise God for being here this morning. Amen. At the City of David Church here in Houston, Texas. We thank God for all of you this morning. Praise God. Again, we praise God for our Sunday school. We had an awesome time this morning. Amen. Want to take the time out to say thank you to all those who support this ministry. We thank God for you, for your time, talent, and your treasure. We thank you, thank you, thank you, and we're continually praying for your success. We invite you to drop Drop us an email at codchurch the number seven at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. We also invite you to go over to our YouTube channel. Yeah, I've updated uh, at the City of David Church, Houston. Praise God. Amen. It's lengthy and it's time consuming, but praise God. Amen. We were able to get some done. And so the reason for that is that you might go out and you might be edified by something said there on our YouTube channel. Praise God. We need to be encouraged. Amen. We learned that we need, we edify one another. Amen. So we pray that there be something said there that would help you through your journey. And so if you hear my voice this morning, amen, there's still a journey, amen, going on in your life and you need help, amen, on this road. If you think you're doing it on your own, baby, it, it ain't happening that way. And so we want to encourage you that you might go and you might find something that would uplift you and that would encourage you. 
Praise God. And so that is the conclusion of our preliminary. And we just thank God for all those, those that may be visiting by Facebook and those that are here in the congregation. We thank God for you. And we ask that you will continue to pray for the city of David. Will you do that? Amen. Amen. You're going to do that. Praise God. Now, with no further ado, praise God, our preacher of the hour is coming. Elder Calvin Harris is going to come and he's going to bring forth the word of God to us this morning. Let's say amen for him. Let's pray for him as he comes. Amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Uh, before I, uh, we get started, we have a presentation right quick. Uh, can Missionary Harrison please come up? Pastor Jones, would you come forward, please? Amen. October is National Clergy Month. Mm -hmm. And on behalf of the City of David Church, we want you to know that we love you. We thank God for you, the God that's in you, for your persistence to stay on the wall and to labor in prayer on our behalf. We can't pay you for all that you do for us, but here's a small token, and we want you to know that we appreciate you. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Can I hug your wife? Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you, we bless you, we honor you for being such an awesome God. God, we pray that you would have your way, oh God, that you would cleanse our heart and our minds. We repent, oh God. Lord, we ask that you would remove all the distractions, the lunch plans, the evening plans, God, the week plans. God, have your way in Jesus' name. Sing your word, oh God, in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. I uh, just want to give an overview, a overview of last week, a quick overview. And so we're talking about being in a barren land. So we talked about uh, Sarah, uh, Abraham and Sarah uh, last week. And so what we learned uh, and what we understood from last week out of James chapter 1 and 2, he says, uh, my brother, count it not, he says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Uh, uh, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. In other words, although we are going through something, sometimes we might, you know, make a little mistake here or there, but God is still working it out. But the final key was that God asked the believer that's in a barren land, he asked the question, is there anything too hard for me. Now that was to the believer. Now if you don't believe God, uh, you know what you got to get saved, then you can say, okay God, what did you say? But God asked the believer. Now for you that claim to know God and have received him, he says, is there anything too hard for me? And the answer is no, it isn't. Amen. I'm going to just set this out my way if you don't mind. And uh, 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 we've, Today we're going to talk about Isaac and Rebecca. My, my, my. I thought I was going to breeze through Isaac and Rebecca. I was just going to say, you know, Rebecca was barren and that was it. And, you know, let's go ahead and get to Jacob and, uh, you know, Leah and Rachel. But you know what? Man, that word, when you start getting in the word, you cannot see God until you start seeking God. And so if you look at this story, now we're going to Genesis chapter 24 uh, for all that, uh, 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 that's trying to follow along. And I need you to read this chapter on your own because there's so much in this thing. I'm going to have to chop it up so I can give you the point. Now here's the thing is, do you know what that picture is? Uh, uh, a hologram. Uh, but now there's another one that it has two or three pictures inside of it. And so when you're looking at God's word, if you're looking at one picture, you're not seeing the big picture. Because when you turn your head or you turn the word, you will see another picture. It does not mean the word has changed. You will see another form or a completion, a beginning, a middle, or an ending to the word of God. It makes it complete. 
complete. And if you'll look at this thing, you'll see a complete picture and you'll get excited. And so what I hope to bring out today is uh, the story of Rebecca, her beginning, uh, her destiny, uh, the point in time of her delivery from being barren and Rebecca's purpose. And so you know what? I want to skip to the end, <laughs> her purpose, so I, I can take my time yeah. on the beginning. Amen? Yeah. And so at the end, it says, uh, let's see, in uh, Genesis chapter 25, verses 19 through 26, uh, it says, And these are the generation of Isaac, Abraham's son. Isaac, Abraham begot Isaac. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Y'all don't have to read. There, you have to pause sometimes. You have to stop. Uh, Genesis chapter twenty-five, verses nineteen through twenty-six. And what happens is when you start reading the Word of God like it's a novel, you're going to miss. All the richness of this word. This is not a novel. Yeah, it's a love story. Yeah, there's some espionage in it. Yeah, there's some spies going on. Yeah, there's some bad things going on. But there's a lot of good things going on that's teaching you how to receive the fullness and the blessings of God. And so now that Isaac, Abraham begot Isaac, Here's the, here's the story. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. Now, come on now. You got to understand that there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of blind spots in this story. And so as you read the word of God, you'll find that God starts filling in the blank. He says uh, uh, um, <clears throat> in verse 21, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because... She was barren. And the Lord entreated him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Here's the thing is, Isaac inquired for her to get pregnant. But now that she's pregnant, she understood that God existed. Isaac said, Father, would you bless my wife? And God did it. So now she understood there is a living God. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. She understood for herself that there is a living God. So now she went to God. What's going on? There's this moving. There's this rumbling and tumbling in my stomach. What's going on? Lord, I, I, need, I need to know what's going on. I've never experienced this. I, am I doing something wrong? Uh, what's going on? Have you ever got excited? And excited don't always mean in a happy mood. Excitement means sometimes uh, you get, uh, uh, you know, might sometimes get a little loud or uh, you start talking fast or you get carried away and you run off, you know, like a freight train, you know, with your thoughts and with your mouth. You know, sometimes people get excited. But there's a reason why. And so when she inquired of the Lord, verse 23, the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. The elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered was fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. First came out red all over like a hairy garment and they called his name Esau after that the saying th that came his brother out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel and his name was called Jacob and Isaac 
was three score years old when she bared them. So how old was that? He was uh, 60 years old. Now, remember, he got married when he was 40 years old. Now he's having his first set of children at 60 years old. Amen. Amen. Ain't God good? But that is a prophecy to what God had promised Abraham. Amen. So now that we got the, the destiny, uh, 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 part of her destiny out, let's go and backtrack in uh, Genesis chapter 24. And, and so we're going to start in the first verse. It's broken up into several, several categories, but it's just the story. Man, I hope that I can present this picture to you today that you will see God in his awesome power, in his mighty, in his mighty Mighty, mighty, uh, 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 in his sanctuary, how he has planned our lives for us. Now, in Genesis chapter 4, I'm starting in verse 1, and Abraham was old. Here's the thing. This is the beginning, okay? We're talking about the beginning. We learned that Sarah was barren. So where did Sarah come? She came from, okay? So now we're going to go to find out why Rebecca is barren. Amen? Because they're tied together. Now, some things are hereditary. You need to know. Some things are hereditary. But nothing is settled in stone with God. Nothing can stop God from changing it the way he wants. Matter of fact, God's will is to be seen every day in our lives. If the truth be told. But do you want to see God's will? Verse 20, uh, 24, chapter 24, verse 1. And Abraham was old, well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. First of all, if God has blessed uh, Pastor Jones in all things, man, I need to be around Pastor Jones. Why? Because I need that anointing over my life. Yeah, I don't get it. See, when I went to the prison ministry, I went to the prison ministry because of Pastor Jones. And when Pastor Jones walks in the room, he commands the room. You have uh, 40 to 60 prisoners, but when he starts talking, everybody shuts up. It's like E.F. Hutton, but it is P.D. Jones. You understand? Pastor Jones steps up, and so they give him his fur, they undivided attention. Man, that's who I want to be around in the presence of someone like that. And so Abraham was blessed. God had blessed him. There was a releasement that it was seen throughout the land. Wherever Abraham was, they blessed Abraham because he was the representation of God. Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over everything. Verse 3, I will make thee swear by the Lord, God of heaven and the God of earth. Now, I got a, a quick uh, brief note right there. And, uh, let me switch over to my note uh, because there's something about uh, that. So here's the thing is, Abraham made his servant to swear by God. Well, why is that? Because Abraham had a serious request. Is your request ever that serious that you involve your God? Mm. Here's the thing is, Abraham brought God to be the witness in what he was asking. And so here's the thing is, when God's word is not, when God or the name of God is not that important to you, you're walking on dangerous ground. Now, a quick reference is uh, uh, when you don't value God's name, look at how King Josiah's life ended. Uh, and for future references, Second Chronicles chapter 35, verses 20 to 27, talks about King Josiah's death. King Josiah did not die. King Josiah did not die as an old man. Okay, I need y'all to check this out later on. He died young. He was younger than me. He died a young king because he lost the value of God's name. Whew. 
What happened is when King Josiah took office at eight years old, what happened, he came through and he started cleaning up the land because his father was wicked. God took him out. So he started getting rid of all the altars and idols and places of sacrifice. But what happened, he brought the priests in. They cleaned up the church. They found a little hidden cupboard. What happened? The word of God was there. The word of God is life changing. And so when God's word has no value, you're in a dangerous state. I'm not talking fast because I'm in a rush. I'm talking fast because I got so much to say. I need y'all to just work with me because y'all going to have to rewatch this thing. But now here we go. King Josiah was king for only 31 years. But now he took the kingdom when he was eight. So he died at the age of 39. Why? Because he threw this big old feast. It was the best feast honoring God like never before and never will happen ever again like it. But what happened after he threw the feast, uh, God had told a pagan go a king to go and fight the other Israelites over there. And what happened is he went over there to intervene. You need to pick your battles wisely. Every fight ain't your fight. We're in a barren land, so just because I'm in this land don't mean that I just do whatever I want to do. I still have a responsibility for my house, for my name, and for my family. And so when he walked up there, he says, now this is what the pagan king said. He says, your God sent me to war over there. Here's the thing is, when someone addresses your God, you mean you don't believe in the power and the might of your own God? That it would cause you to say, my God told you? Because if my God told you, let me just step out the way. You go ahead and do your thing. Because that's my God. Who am I to tell my God what to do? And yet the king, he, he warned him several times. He says, but your God has told me to do this. And when you're hard-hearted and you cannot change, you need to watch out. Trouble is on the home front. He lost his life uselessly. Died at 39 years old because he couldn't walk away and mind his own business. Proverbs 9, uh, chapter 9, verse 10 and 11 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by, for, for by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If you want your life to be increased and your days of success to be increased, you want to have to honor the name of God. When you say Jesus, there's a reason. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Uh, when you say uh, God Almighty, there's a reason. Because that's who he is in your life. And when he stopped being those things, yes, yes. Woe, woe unto you. When the power of God is no more relevant in your life, you're on dangerous ground. Amen. Amen. Here's another thing. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13. There has no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to to bear it. In other words, God says, I've already, if I, if I put this thing in front of you and you say, God, I can't do it, he says, I've already made a way out All for right. you. Right. That you're not going to condemn your relationship. Mm -hmm. See, we think that if we condemn our relationship, well, I can lie. That's not God. 
Well, I can, if I steal this or take this uh, that I'm not supposed to have, that's not God. God says, I'll make a way out. Let me give you a quick example. We're not talking about Abraham, but someone said, well, Abraham lied. No, you need to read further down the chapter. He explains how she's his sister. He made a way to escape. He didn't lie. He just was fearful. And sometimes that happens to us. Oh, yeah, 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 we know God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he's gave us love, power, and a sound mind. But when you have humbled yourself before God, sometimes it, you, you look at the picture in a different manner. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, that dude is too big for me. You know what, I think I'm a, you know, excuse me, sir, let me, let me just, can I just get past you? Let me get to that door right there. It has nothing to do about me being a man. It has everything to do about you humbling yourself before God. We don't have permission to do any and everything because we're in a barren land. We still have to seek God to get out of this thing. We have to honor God and search his word that we may come out on top. As we seen last week. So now we're going back to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 24. And so we notice that, 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 that God, he says, he made his servant to swear. He says that you will not take a wife uh, of my son out of this land. Don't do it. Go home and find him a wife. Verse uh, 9, he says, And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning the matter. Now we're looking at part two of this thing. He says, the servant's journey. Now, verse 10 says, And the servant took ten camels, ten camels of the camels of his master, and departed. He didn't tarry. He didn't wait. This, this, this wasn't something where I, I'll do it when I get ready. One of, our, one of our downfalls is, well, God, I'll do it when I get ready. Well, yeah, I heard what you said, God, but I'm not ready to do it right now. Well, if they can't wait for me, God, they don't need it. And it's not even about you. The mission that you were sent was from someone for someone else. But yet we have the audacity to tell God when we're going to do it. And we, we don't know why we're in a barren land. We don't know why we're struggling, why we're saying, Lord, why am I having these pains? Or why, why am I uh, I'm short? You know, why am I missing this? Why uh, There's a lot of tension in the air that you can just touch. You, know, you feel that tension? Man, God, man, woo, that's some thick tension right there. Lord, I, I need some deliverance here. But he said, I need you to obey. I need you to obey. I need you to fix this thing. He says, fix yourself. Check yourself so that you can break the tension out of the air. He says in verse 12, and he said, O oh Lord God my, of my master, Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master, Abraham. Do anybody respect you that much? That they want to serve the God that you serve. Mm -hmm. That they talk to the God that you talk to because of you. That they want to make sure you know, hey, I, I'm paying attention to you. I'm serving your God. Is anybody watching you that hard? That they can say, man, I, I, would you talk to your God for me? Because I'm talking to your God for me. Can you help me? Or let me, what, what would your God have me to do? Because there's a change. It, it causes something of each individual that's seeking God. Yeah. It's not a show. See, we have change in this day and age. Everything is a movie on a wall. All right. All right. Come on. We don't have to do nothing no more. Just turn on the TV. And if I don't like it, I'll flip the channel. And then if I'm hungry, I go to the microwave. And, or better yet, I just get a bag of chips. We don't have to cook dinners. We don't have to make biscuits. We don't have to go ahead and slaughter the hog and make the ham. Wait, everything has been so microwaved for us. 
We think God is a microwave. We think he's a genie. We cut on the switch. Well, I don't want that today. Let me change the channel. That's not how God's work. And you wonder why you're in a barren land. Hmm. He says, let the same be she that go. Uh, I'm, I'm in Genesis, uh, we're at verse 14. And let it come to pass that the damsel who I shall say, let down thou pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camel drink also. Let the same be that that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. Now here's the thing. Before I read verse 15, the difference between tempting God and trying God, tempting God is you don't believe God and you want to you test. That's tempting God. But to try God for your success is saying, God, because I believe that you are God and that you are king. You are my everything and you will fulfill. God, if you will give me great success, allow this to happen so I'll know. Because it's nothing worse than not knowing what you're supposed to do or who you're supposed to talk to. Or is this the right situation or is it the wrong one? I mean, what's really going on here? Am I in the right place or not? Right. Do I need to go somewhere else? And when the devil starts asking all these questions on the inside, it brings up a spirit of confusion. God, we bind that spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so now he asked God for success. Verse 15, and it came to pass before he had done, before he had done speaking that behold, Rebecca came out who was born to Bethel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahar, Abraham's brother. He was at the right place at the right time. In the right season. Who? Let me. I, I got another note here. Let me. Let me go to my notes, man. I, I love this, man. I, I was looking at this thing, and, and so God's going to open some doors for someone right now. He's going to open some doors because it doesn't matter about you being in a barren land. God is going to bring you out of that barren land. Now, when I say that, please don't misinterpret what I said because you still got to go through. The process. You still have to go through the process. We were talking about in Sunday school how after God took the throne from Saul, he still lived 40 years. You still have to go through the process. See, we always add to God's word or we take from God's word instead of receive God's word. Just like God says you will, you will surely die if you eat of that fruit. Uh, will you surely die? Who's talking to you? Hold up, loose here, devil. God said it. I believe it. Proverbs 3 and 6, no, no, Isaiah 65 and 24. And it shall come to pass before they call. Wait, did y'all hear that? Now, this is the word. I'm giving you address so you'll look this stuff up, this, these scriptures up for yourself, that you may live and not die. He says in Isaiah 65, 24, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. God has already answered your prayer. Have you started calling? Hallelujah. He says, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Why? Because I've already answered the prayer. I'm just hearing you speak because you trusted me. You believe that I was God enough to do it. You asked the question, is there anything too hard? And I told you no. And because you trusted me, I've already answered you. My God, my God. Man, here we go, here we go. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebecca came out. Verse 16, and the damsel was very fair to look upon, and she was a virgin. 
why do we always go for the junk? We always settle for the least. I believe that we don't teach that we need to settle for the best. I don't go and buy a lot of off-brand Miracle Whips. I buy Miracle Whip salad dressing. From craft, that's right. I don't buy Best Buy, uh, uh, Best Made, or, or any other brand. Why? Because it doesn't taste the same. I have become accustomed to having the best. Uh, and because I have become accustomed to having the best, uh, it's hard for me to settle for anything else. And if we would teach our children that we deserve the best because we serve the most high God, guess what? They would stop settling for the best. They would understand that when you're in the house of God, I need to be paying attention to the preacher instead of taxing. They would understand that instead of me worrying about dinner, I need to focus on feasting on this word. Instead of me worried about next week, I need to be focused on right now. But we won't do it, and we'll say, God, you let me down. Hmm. And God says, I'll laugh at your calamities. You, you think you're the boss, but I'll show you if you won't pay attention. If you won't take heed, I'll show you. Who's in control? Verse 18, and she did. Uh, uh, verse 17, and the servant ran to meet her. And she said, let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. Now this is the servant from Abraham's that he sent to go find a wife for Isaac. And she said, drink, my Lord. And she hastened and let down her pitcher upon her hand. And gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she says, I will draw water for thy camel also until they have done drinking. Now, here's the first picture. Now, remember, we're talking about the picture inside the picture. We're talking about being in a barren land. Here's the thing is, now, did you notice that she just gave him a gift? We want to charge everybody for everything. He says, give me a drink. Not only did he get, she give him a drink, but she says, I'll give the men, other men a drink, and your camels too. And she gave everyone drink because she, she was the one drawing it out of the well. All right. Out of the blue, yeah. she gave the gift. Now, come on, remember, say the gift. the gift. Because if you don't know how to give the gift, you can't receive the gift. All right. She gave the gift. Amen. And so we go to the next part of this stage. He, uh, verse uh, is saying, being paid for service rendered or a pre-gift for gift. So she gave the pre-gift. He says, and it came to pass as the camel had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of a half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekel weights of gold. She, she just, man, she hit the jackpot. Just because she gave him a drink of water and gave the camels a drink of water because she had to go fill up that one bucket and take it to the camel trough. But before she did that, she filled up that one bucket and gave everybody with him a drink of water. Wow. Wow. For that, she hit the jackpot. As we would say today, she hit the lottery. Huh. Hmm. Ching ching. He says, and she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethel. So, verse 23, he says, uh, Who daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee. Is there room in thy father's house for lodging? She said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethel, of the son of Milcah, which she bared unto Nahar. She said, Moreover unto him, we have both straw and providenter. providenter provender enough and room to lodge in. She offered another gift. Wait, 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 wait. She just gave water to, to them and the camels. 
Now she says, I have lodging and food. All right. Mm. My God. My God. My God. Now, I don't know if we read it, but the servant had took ten camels full of goods with him to go find the wife. They came with the intention of being a blessing. All right. They came with the intention All right. of being a blessing. Yeah. Do you ever go somewhere with the intention of being a blessing? I know my daughter always says, oh, somebody paid for my groceries or somebody paid for my lunch. Uh, I don't know. She got a spirit that they just want to buy her groceries and pay her lunch. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You know, that's, uh, hey, we all have different gifts and callings. But hallelujah, there's a person out there waiting to bless you if you're in the right place at the right time. He says, uh, uh, we have both straw and provender. And he says, I begin, I being in the way the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Now the servant is acknowledging God. Do you see this thing in the midst of everything? I believe that he's amazed. He's amazed. I've been led directly to this fountain and the the one i'm looking for came and gave me water and fed my cat gave my cat now she's offering me a place to stay and food to eat you know they didn't need it they had 10 camels worth of supplies but god is still giving it being in a barren land don't mean that god is not blessing you it means this you you're barren in a particular area of your life but God's grace and mercy is still covering you. That's why our families are still together. That's why we still have jobs. That's why we have food in the icebox. It's not because we were all worthy and we are all that good. It was because we belong to the most high God. Verse, here's our next session. I love it when a plan comes together. Rebecca, uh, uh, and this is what the, uh, the servant was saying. Verse 28, and the damsel ran. Here, uh, well, Rebecca says, I have good news. She was running home. And she was like, Mama, Mama, Levin, Levin, whatever she called him. Bubba, Bubba, you know, whatever. Uh, I have good news. Uh, hey, hey, she was making a joyful noise. I got some news. Yeah. You know why she was saying that? Because she had the proof. Yeah. Cha-ching-ching. Ching. The bracelets that was on her wrist. Cha-ching-ching. Right. Ching. That big old earring hanging from her ear. Right. She had proof that she had an encounter with something. All right. All right. God would give you proof that there's an encounter with something. You had an encounter with something. She was running, and as she was running, she says, uh, uh, and Rebecca had a brother. She told them, verse 28, and the damsel ran and told them uh, of her mother's house. Everybody that was in the house, these things. Now, I've got a daughter like that. She runs and has to tell everybody in the house. <laughs> she have, when she have good news, you'll hear her. She's all the way upstairs. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Would you shut that noise up? Uh, but wait, what you praising the Lord for? I got a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. We should make a joyful noise. We should be the one that's always telling that God is doing something. If God ain't doing nothing with you, why would someone want to come and worship and praise the Lord with you? Mm. Here we go. And Rebecca, I mean, and it came, uh, let's see, and it came to pass, I mean, verse 30, when he saw the earrings and the bracelet, there's proof, upon his sister's hand, and when he heard the word of Rebecca, his sister, saying, thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the, uh, that he heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, saying, thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood. So when Levin heard the words and the good news of Rebecca, he came to the servant, to the man, to find out, who are you? Are you friend or foe? Yeah. 
Now, he didn't say that. Come on. She had gold on her hand, but that's what he was thinking. Are you friend or foe? When you come to my house, I want to know. Are you friend or foe? All right. All right. What is your intention? Just like they asked the prophet Samuel, uh, is it good or is it bad? I want to know. But with the gold on her hand, they kind of had an inclination what was going on. All right. Verse 32, and the man came into the house, ungirdled his camel, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that was with him, and there was set meat before him to eat. Now, isn't that a deja vu moment? Didn't we read about that, how the three men came up on Abraham while he was sitting in the door of his tent in the heat of the day? And then Abraham ran out there, and what he did, he offered them uh, 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 the powder room so they can get comfortable. They can wash out the sand and the grit between their toes, and they can get comfortable because it's hard to be comfortable when your feet is aching. When you thinking, oh man, my dogs, uh, I mean my feet, you know, you, you're like, man, I, it's hard to concentrate and deliver a message uh, when you got other things on your mind. So what they did is they fixed it for them so they can get comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> And he said, I am Abraham's servant. So now he starts going through the story. And the Lord God has blessed me, my master, greatly, my master, greatly. And he has become great. And he that giveth him, he giveth him flocks, herds, silver, gold, men servants, maid servants, camels, asses. Wait, did y'all not know that Abraham was already a nation? I know we read the stories, but didn't you ever put the picture together? He was already a nation. I mean, don't you remember when he went up and fought against the kings? Right. Don't you remember when he went to go save his, his, his nephew, Lot, and he took 300 trained men out of his own house? Don't you get he was already a nation? Who? Man, that's some powerful stuff. And if we could ever get to the point where we let God bless us. Yeah, we might be barren in certain areas of our life. We might be going through something. But God is still right there with us. Why would we give up on God who's right there the whole time? He's still blessing us. He's still making ways for us. If I get a ticket because I was speeding, well, I brought that on myself. Yeah. That's not God. Yeah. Yeah. If I go out with the wrong crowd and get in trouble, that's not God. That's me. But God was still there because it could have been worse. And I'm not talking about the, the government, uh, the governor's uh, advertised me it could have been worse. It could have been worse. You could have been dead and gone. You could have been disabled, handicapped. You could have lost your sight, your limbs. You could have lost someone else's life. It could have been worse. Yes, sir. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. But God is there all the time. He's right there. He's right there providing for you. And he says, he start telling the story. After he had showed how great his master was, in other words, there was a nation waiting for Rebecca to be the mother of. Now, that's not what they were thinking about. But as we see afar off, we see there was a nation waiting for her to be the mother of. And hopefully we'll prove that point in just a second. He says that my master made me swear. Here's another thing is, people have to know what you're saying and repeat what you say versus start doing their own thing. Because I know some people, they'll start doing what they own. Well, he won't mind if I change this or they won't mind if I do it this way. And this is how we miss our blessing. Because we can't hear God. 
God is not open for negotiation. Our blessing comes because obedient. My wife taught a lesson. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. He's not looking for you to wing it. And let's see how you, how you do what they call it when, you, when you're rapping without no lyrics and stuff. What they call it? Freestyling. God don't need no freestyle. He needs you to obey because the blessing is in the obedience. Verse 45, and before I had done speaking, he was reminding them she came forth. Uh, we're going to the next uh, group, uh, starting in verse 50. He says, uh, and, and, and my thought is, if you commit and obey, God will do the rest. Then Laban and Bethu, Laban and Bethu answered, saying, this thing proceeded from the Lord. Wait, 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 wait. The people that you're going to talk to will see God for themselves. I didn't say they would receive God. That's not what I said. What I said is that they will see God for themselves. That was this lady, and she was a, a, a little old lady, and she didn't have no food. So she went to the church that stayed open, and she went to the altar, and she, she was praying for some food. And, Lord, I need something. And she was like, bless me. And she wasn't, I'm not saying she was crying and begging and stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying she was praying for some food. Pastor Jones was talking about, uh, Pastor Jones and First Lady Jones was talking about uh, uh, a sister that was faithful and she obeyed God. So this lady, uh, I'm talking about somebody completely different because I don't know what he's talking about. But this lady went to the church and she was on the altar and she just prayed, God, you know I need. And you know, and so these young young people walked in and it was, you know, it got their earrings and all this stuff, spiked hair, all this stuff, you know, just different weird, what we would call weird, but you know, they'd be normal. And, and, and they was laughing and joking at her, like, <laughs> did God send us some food yet? <laughs> wait, I'm, wait, there's the dough. Did God bring us some food? <laughs> they, they're laughing at this lady, but what happened is they called themselves pulling a prank on her. What did they do? <laughs> Hallelujah. They went to the grocery store and bought groceries and put it at our feet. God used them to answer the prayer. While they thought they were being the joke, the joke was really on them. Because you was the blessing. Hallelujah. And when we get to the point where we trust God anyhow, God will show you I'll be the blessing for you. Whatever situation you're going through. My, my, my. Here we go. Here we go. When we have, uh, uh, let me see. So if you commit and obey, God will do the rest. The thing that proceeded from you, from uh, the thing proceeded from the Lord, we cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Now, if you keep reading God's word, you're going to hear this same statement in just a couple more chapters over. How is that God gets more respect out of the wicked than out of the righteous? I was like, wow, they're obeying God, but yet they don't serve him. But we call ourselves serving him, and we won't obey him. And we're wondering why we're in a barren land, why things are not working out. That's not the case for everyone, though. Sometimes we're in a barren land that God may get the glory. Do you want God to get the glory in your life? Then I challenge you to listen to God. How do you do that? It's by reading this word. 
You have to understand that every, every few verses we saw that they, you were giving something. Why? Because you wanted to receive something. In this day and age, everybody wants something for nothing. Everybody wants something for nothing. Well, I want some water. But you won't go do nothing nice for anyone else to get the water. I, I want some food. Well, you know, I'm going to go stand on the corner with my little cup. Not take a bath, look dirty. Have this little sign that says, we'll work for food, which they're lying. I stopped the guy and said, okay, I got some work for you to do. Well, I, I can't leave this spot right here. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hmm. Verse 53. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebecca. Now, after all she did, now he already gave her something. Now, he starts unloading those ten camels. And he gave them to Rebecca. And he gave them also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drank. And the men that were with them, they tarried all night. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not the end of the story. That's just the beginning. And if God would do all these marvelous works in the beginning for her, what would he do for you? If God would bless and bless and bless on top of blessing for this barren woman, because she's still barren, what will he do for you? How will he bless you? Are you trusting him? Are you continually making mention, God, uh, I have a need. Uh, God, you know, people say, well, don't pray for yourself. Well, that devil's a lie. So how do God know I need something? Well, wait, wait, wait. The Bible says God knows everything. So therefore, why are we praying? I'm going to let you figure that one out. What I'm trying to get you to see that if I'm to pray for you, I can pray for myself. Because some of you don't have the power to pray for healing over me. But when I trust God and he touches my body, I realize I can pray for myself. See, I remember when I got out the hospital and when I was in a wheelchair and a, a, a missionary, her, her aunt was over at the house watching me. I fell on the floor. Here's the thing is, and you stop talking and putting your mouth on people. Yeah. Don't make God put you in that situation for you to understand what they're going through. I couldn't even roll over. But my neighbor came home just in time. She went outside and my neighbor, she said, can you help me? He came and helped me get back in my wheelchair. Here's the thing is, don't worry about the problem because you've got to look at the blessing. If you look at the problem, he says, we're going to eat the fruit of our lips. Because I know people that speak negative every time. But we'll eat the fruit of our lips. If you speak life, you're going to live. But if you speak death, you're going to die. It's not, it, you, you need to practice speaking God's word in your life. He says, and they call Rebecca. Now, the servant says, hey, don't hinder me. Let me go back to my master so I can complete my job. They were saying, hey, uh, uh, let her stay. Let's stay a little while. And you know what she said? They said, well, we'll call Rebecca and let her make the choice. And verse 50, he says, and they call Rebecca, and she said unto her, and they and said unto her, wilt thou go? With this man. And she said. I will go. God has made. This thing successful. God has made this thing. For successful for you. And what I want you to know. Don't give up. I have a question today. 
Is there anyone that says, God, I'm going through, but I still trust you and I still see you. But it's not that I just see you. I need a little bit more. Is there someone in the room saying, God, I need a little bit more? Because if there are, this is the time for you to come to the altar. I'm, I'm finished. I didn't give you the word. I need you to go back and search the scriptures for yourself. But this is altar call right now. Is there someone who says, God, I, I just... I, I understand that, that, that you are there, but I, I just need a little bit more encouragement. I just need to, it, it's not that I'm, I'm in a bad place. I just, I need just a little bit more because I'm struggling. I'm, I, 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 I don't know, uh, am I on the right path uh, or are you still with me? Because here, the reason why we say this is because God is in the blessing business. He's in the healing business. He's in the deliverance business. And if you don't need nothing from God,